Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review Podcast. Let's review the difference between cholelithiasis versus cholelithiasis. In cholelithiasis, there's a stone in the gallbladder, whereas in cholelithiasis, the stone is actually in the common bile duct. So there's a big difference in terms of the definition. For clinical features, uh, cholelithiasis presents maybe with asymptomatic features or possibly with biliary colic. And cholelithiasis will have right upper quadrant pain, epigastric pain, and jaundice. So there's a marked difference um, in the clinical features. And some of the complications for cholelithiasis include cholecystitis, cholelithiasis, gallstone ileus, or malignancy. Whereas for cholelithiasis, you can have cholangitis, obstructive jaundice, acute pancreatitis, and biliary cirrhosis as the major complications. The diagnosis for cholelithiasis is by a right upper quadrant ultrasound, whereas for cholelithiasis, you'd want to go with the ERCP, that's the test of choice. The treatment for cholelithiasis, again, it's elective cholecystectomy if the biliary colic is severe. And for cholelithiasis, uh, the ERCP will help in removing this stone, and a possible sphincterectomy is recommended in some cases. Now let's review some of the other differences between um, cholelithiasis and cholelithiasis. So, in terms of the clinical features, one of the key signs that you want to look at for cholelithiasis is the BAOS sign, that's B-O-A-S sign. That's basically referred right subscapular pain from the biliary colic. That's one thing you want to keep in mind. Also, patients classically report pain after eating and at night. And the pain is typically located in the right upper quadrant or the epigastrium, and it may be mild or moderate. Also, one-third of patients with biliary colic develop acute cholecystitis within two years. Now, for cholelithiasis, um, understand that there's various causes. Cholesterol stones, obesity, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, all can cause that. Uh, patients may have you know, black stones, which are usually found in the gallbladder and are associated with hemolysis. Um, so you should be thinking of sickle cell, thalassemia, hereditary spherocytosis, or even alcoholic cirrhosis. Brown stones are usually found in bile ducts and are associated with biliary tract infection. So there's also mixed stones that have components of both cholesterol and pigmented stones. Now, complications for cholecystitis um, include cholelithiasis with um, it can you can patients can also have gallstone ileus or malignancy. And the pain in acute cholecystitis is secondary to gallbladder wall inflammation, whereas the pain of biliary colic is secondary to the contraction of the gallbladder against the obstructed cystic duct. Also, the pain of acute cholecystitis persists for several days, whereas the pain of biliary colic usually lasts for a few hours. So, again, on your differential, you know, biliary colic versus cholecystitis versus um, acalculus cholecystitis or cholecystitis, looking at the clinical features will help you make the diagnosis. The signs of biliary tract obstruction definitely you should remember are elevated ALKFOS, increased GGT, elevated conjugated bilirubin, pruritus, uh, clay colored stools, and dark urine. So um, with acute cholecystitis, there's an obstruction of the cystic duct, not an infection, there's an obstruction. And the cystic duct has an obstruction which induces acute inflammation of the gallbladder wall. And chronic cholecystitis may develop with recurrent bouts of acute cholecystitis. Also, in terms of the clinical symptoms, usually the pain is present and it's located in the right upper quadrant or epigastrium. Um, it can radiate to the shoulder or scapula. And nausea, vomiting, anorexia are common. On here, you want to make sure you remember the Murphy sign that's pathognomonic. Inspiratory arrest during deep palpation of the right upper quadrant. Um, and again, hypoactive bowel sounds, low-grade fever, leukocytosis are all very common. To make the diagnosis, you would order a right upper quadrant ultrasound, just like you did for cholelithiasis. Now, um, 
keep in mind that you will see a thickened gallbladder wall with pericholecystic fluid, distended gallbladder in the presence of stones possibly. And if they give you that description, um, you should narrow down your differential to acute cholecystitis. Again, the CT scan is accurate as ultrasound, but it's more sensitive in identifying complications like perforations, abscess, or pancreatitis. And the HIDA scan, the hepatoaminodiatic acetic acid scan, this is used when the ultrasound is inconclusive. So you get the ultrasound, and then if it's inconclusive, you're going to go with the HIDA scan. Again, if it's normal, then you can rule out acute cholecystitis. And if the gallbladder is not visualized within four hours after injection, then diagnosis of acute cholecystitis is confirmed. What are some of the complications of cholecystitis? Well, gangrenous cholecystitis, perforation of the gallbladder. Patients can also present with emphysemous cholecystitis. Um, patients can have cholecystinaric fistula of, with, with the gallstone ileus empyema of the gallbladder, all these are very common. So the treatment involves conservative measures with hydration and IV fluids, bowel rest, and um, sometimes with surgery, cholecystectomy is indicated in most patients with symptomatic gallstones. And early cholecystectomy is performed, preferably, you know, 24 to 48 hours. And gallstone ileus is when the gallstone actually enters the bowel lumen via the cholecystinaric fistula. And what is uh, acalculus cholecystitis? This is um, acute cholecystitis without stones obstructing the cystic duct. Usually it's idiopathic and the signs and symptoms are the same for acute cholecystitis and the diagnosis may be difficult um, because patients with this condition are often severely ill and are other um, suffering from other medical conditions. Emergent cholecystectomy is the treatment of choice and for patients who are too ill for surgery, patients can get percutaneous drainage of the gallbladder uh, with a cholecystectomy. So with cholecystectomy, some of the key points you want to make keep in mind are the lab values, total and direct bilirubin levels are elevated as well as ALKFOS. There's right upper quadrant ultrasound which is usually the initial study but it's not a sensitive study. Um, and ERCP is the gold standard here, and um, PTC, again, is an alternative to ERCP. And patients with CBD stones may be asymptomatic for years, uh, but unlike patients with cholelithiasis, in which the biliary colic may lead to acute um, cholecystitis, the onset of symptoms in cholelithiasis can actually signal the development of life-threatening complications like cholangitis and acute pancreatitis, which are the major complications. Um, patients can also develop obstructive jaundice and so some of the key factors you want to keep in mind as you're studying for the board exam. So that was a quick overview of some of the common um, board relevant topics in gastroenterology that you'll see for the gallbladder and the biliary tract. Please visit complexflashcards.com for additional podcasts and good luck in your preparation.